Hey guys, Frank here with a quick announcement. We have decided to change hosting companies because of the ongoing issue with ad placement. 99.8% of you will be completely unaffected by this, but if by chance in a couple of weeks a Saturday comes and goes without a new episode appearing for you, please let us know so we can figure out how to get us on whatever platform you're listening to us on. The rest of you won't have to do a thing except enjoy the show without any ads. And you may or may not know this, but you can always listen to the show at thankgodimatheist.com. And now, this week's episode. Hi guys, well from crazed uh, destruction in Salt Lake City, Utah It's Thank God I'm Atheist The podcast I'm Frank Feldman And I'm Dan Beecher And coming up on the show today, we're going to be talking about end times And the fact that, like, <laughs> maybe Apocalypse. For, for once, um, I kind of know what the end of days feels like Are they right? The question I, I, is, are they right? Uh, they might be right. I have, there is no doubt in my mind that they are wrong. <laughs> but That's true. Maybe I have a little bit of empathy about what the end of days Oh my feels God, like. you guys, so. uh, listen, <laughs> every, uh, every third tree in Salt Lake City was knocked Ooh. down by a windstorm. I know. It was crazy. We had hurricane level winds in Salt Lake City. So yeah. we're a little shook. But I'm not, not even... We're not alone in this. Like we've, there's been, there was a derecho like yeah. hit the Midwest. The California's on fire. Yeah. Um, like there's that, that dam broke up in Michigan. <laughs> like, <That's>, yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like it's just been everywhere and everything. So, um, we'll be talking about all of that at the end of the show. Yeah. Um, or on the second half of the show, I guess I should say. Um, and, uh, in the meantime, though, we have some, uh, news that's happened this week that we, news stories we'd like to, to discuss. Dan, sure. Dan. Yeah. What? <laughs> what do you got? Mike Lee, uh, Supreme Court shortlist, uh, occupant, <laughs> Senator Jeez. Mike Lee of Utah. Oh God. What a he peach he is. And he might be, he might nightmare. be the best human. Like if Trump does get a second term. And he appoints Mike Lee or his ding dong brother to the Supreme Court. Holy shit, we're all fucked. Anyway, yeah. honestly, um, there is no better reason not to vote against Donald Trump than the prospect of Mike Lee being a Supreme Court justice. <laughs> well, and here's a great way just to sum up Mike Lee uh, he's too conservative for Utah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, he, he got in there, he snuck in during that whole um, tea party movement thing and they when yeah. they ousted bennett um who was a perfectly reasonable human being a conservative yes but reasonable. yeah that was that was when that was when the gop decided we're done with reasonable yeah and they got rid of all these you know more moderate types in the in the party although bennett was pretty conservative um but nonetheless um my <laughs> mike lee has has a beef with with the media in general he hates the media <laughs> right um but his little uh his little fight against the media has has found its way back to utah yeah uh and an unlikely target dan uh oh. he he is he's pissed off at ksl.com oh my god which is uh the local locally owned you know uh well it's owned by the lds church the mormons yeah own uh the whole ksl and desert news you know news operation yeah um, it's a it's they have the tv station that's ksl they've got ksl radio and of course then they have the desert news and and uh but ksl.com is where you go where they sort of you know have all of all of the news all of yeah. everything that's coming out of their uh of their sort of media and newsrooms and whatnot. It all gets kind of just put online at KSL.com. Um, and he says that KSL.com is too liberal and he wants the LDS church to sell it. Um, wow. He says, you guys, this is, this is Utah's Fox news. Like there's nothing. 
you you couldn't uh, no, that's possibly a mean make the against, case against KSL. Like it's crazy conservative, right? But they're yeah. not foaming at the mouth and and I mean, it's mainly just like in the afternoon on KSL TV, it's just a lot of locally produced like you know, home shows and whatnot. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, it's, but, like and people standing in studios, like cooking food and doing crafts and like, <laughs> you know, after they get done with whatever soap operas are still on TV. But, but I'm saying it's a super conservative outlet organization. Oh yeah. Well, and it's, it's, it's so pro LDS church and it's pro conservative values. And so, you know, they, they, they talk all about family and they talk very openly about, faith and religion like you would there are parts of of the desert news if you were reading it that that um that seem perfectly normal right it's a normal sure. newspaper and then you flip the page and it's just it's it's so um unabashedly mormon right so unabashedly yeah, you... religious and and uh but anyway so yeah so he's all upset and he, uh, it, this really stems from, it's apparently it's been going on for a little while, but he saw this post, uh, that, or a tweet that, uh, KSL.com, um, had, well, they'd retweeted, I guess, an AP story or something like that. Um, and it said president Donald Trump's younger brother, Robert Trump, a businessman known for an even keel that seemed almost incompatible with his family name died after being hospitalized in New York, the president said in a statement. Um, and so he, he says the tweet was appalling um, <laughs> and that KSL was spiking some sort of political football, essentially like, like dancing on the grave of or whatever. And I, what? I, like, I had to reread it like two or three times in order to figure out what it was that he was pissed off about. Yeah. And it's the, the, he says that the, he's known for an even keel that seemed almost incompatible with the family name. Like this is some dig <laughs> on like, it's saying that Donald Trump ha doesn't have an even keel. Well, I'm right. sorry. Like, have you we met, have you seen <laughs> anything Donald Trump has literally <laughs> ever done of all the criticisms that you could have of Donald Trump that would sound partisan, right? right? Acknowledging that he doesn't have the most even temperament. <laughs> that's just I mean, that's clearly just a fact well anyway he goes on and he's like you know talking about how the ap is this liberal you know news gathering organization that keeps getting oh more God. liberal and this and that and i'm like and i'm like well i mean no the ap is not liberal and i no. double I, I got online and there's this media evaluating site that i that i will go to sometimes to be like wait a second where where is stuff falling on the spectrum right like right. If i don't know what something is i'm like surely they'll have the ap on here it's you know i've gone for like lesser known things just to be like wait who is this right um totally. and ap right in the middle Right. Yeah, it's like literally the most that. trustable, trustworthy of all of the new right. national news organizations well, and in our country. It's in the center, right? Yeah. Just like Reuters is in the center. Like these, these sort of, um, what do you call them? Like the um, wire service type um, news yeah. agencies. The they AP. There's not like you know the AP Times. You know newspaper. It's they just write stories and send them out on the wire, right? I, and, but they vet them. They work hard to oh, make yeah, sure that yeah they have a standard, right? Yeah. And uh, but anyway, they fall politically. They're in the center, and and he's just like he's up in arms. Apparently, KSL.com um, deleted the tweet and apologized. What after all of this? Jesus um, so Christ! So now Lee is feeling like even like, like you emboldened. Know, emboldened, exactly. Um, and I guess there was another article um, that uh, focused on something that well, when Trump, uh, it, it, the article said that Trump praised the supporters of QAnon and that he suggested he appreciates their support of his candidacy. Right. Right. Because he, he doesn't care who's voting for him as long right. as they're voting for him. Exactly. Uh, and so uh, uh, Mike Lee goes, is that what he said? I don't think it was. But KSL said it was, so it must be true, right? <laughs> um, and so the, the fact of the matter is Trump was asked about believers of the QAnon conspiracy. And he said, 
I don't know much about the movement other than I understand that they like me very much. Uh, I've heard these are people that love our country. Dude, like, that sounds exactly like what the EP said he said. Right. right? Like, <laughs> so anyway, um, this is going on. Um, I, I didn't really know about the ownership structure of the whole thing, but it doesn't really matter. We don't need to get into that. But KSL.com isn't KSL TV or KSL radio. It's like its own thing. They just okay. have the brand, right? But nonetheless, it's owned by the LDS church who has re responded back basically... Well, not the church actually, of course, wouldn't respond to something like this. It was KSL.com that responded to it. Um, and they said, we are disappointed in the comments uh, from Senator Lee. We have a strict policy of political neutrality. And we're very yeah. hard to keep uh, political bias out of our newsroom, they say. Um, we strive to serve the various audiences we reach. Um, and then they, they actually get to the crux of the whole thing. They say, as a local media outlet, we do not have the luxury of a cadre of uh, reporters in Washington. And so we are dependent uh, to some degree on wire services for national and international coverage. Sure. Absolutely. As does any local news outlet, right? Like, and they, they're they using, it, it's not like the New York Times, which isn't even, their reporting isn't even that liberal. Right. Um, what am I? Uh, MSNBC. Let's say MSNBC had like a wire service that they started, right? You know, it's not even like they're taking it from that. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> this is, it. Yeah, it's amazing to hear a Mormon senator criticizing the news outlet that basically, if you read it, assumes that Mormonism is true. Like, right. One of the facts that the uh, one of the facts that they will not shy away from is that mormonism is true right well and i love that he's like the it's too liberal lds church just sell it and it's like <laughs> well maybe like maybe th they're not the ones that are out of touch with reality mike lee yeah. maybe it's maybe you should look in the mirror slightly right? okay frank you just you you literally just defended the lds church as being less out of touch than somebody i just think mike that's lee? amazing yeah yeah I mean, it's it amazing. says a lot that that's the, <laughs> yeah. of course they're less crazy than Mike Lee. Of course they yeah. are. Yeah. Of course they believe things that are more reasonable <laughs> right. than fucking Mike Lee. He yeah. is Mike, when you're, when you are worst. too, too crazy for Mormondom, you should probably, <laughs> you should do some, some searching, some soul searching. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to take us up to, to the great white North up to Canada. Oh, uh, where in Nova Scotia, there is a bit of a dust up. Now, Canada has a nationwide uh, right to die that uh, that went into effect. Uh, they call it the Medical Assistance in Dying or MAID. Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, they're, they're, I think their Supreme Court had a ruling uh, that made it uh, legal across the country and then they passed a, some laws, some nationwide national laws that basically uh, sort of spelled out how it should work, et cetera. Right. Well, an 83-year-old man uh, has ha, in Nova Scotia was diagnosed with uh, chronic pulmonary disease, advanced hmm. chronic pulmonary disease, hmm. uh, to, which is advanced enough that he definitely qualifies for this uh this uh medical assistance for his death mm -hmm. um and he's ready for it he wants it he signed up and then someone intervened and that someone is his 82 year old wife who oh. filed an injunction with the supreme court of nova scotia oh which forced him to cancel his uh his plans to die and uh and also probably put a bit of a strain on the marriage if i'm being honest uh she apparently Unless this her, is his way of getting a divorce you know right like, he's just done yeah her claim is that he's not trying to die because of his pulmonary uh issues but rather that he's trying to die because he has uh high anxiety and uh mental delusions oh. which when you're 80, what did, what did I say? 83? Three. And you're suffering from those things? Why doesn't that qualify you for to, to kill yourself if you want to? Like, what are we even talking about here? Oh. But... Well, is she trying uh, to make she, some sort of not sound mind? 
sort of argument? He's kind of, yeah. Mm. So she so she files this thing. Uh, the real truth of the matter is that she f- has a moral opposition to the whole concept, which I think is some bullshit. Uh, because it's his life, not hers. You right. know what I mean? Like, yes, this is hard on everybody, but why are you making a, a dying man's life even harder? Even if you are, even if you have been married to him for almost 50 fucking years. And that I'm sure what? was hard enough. <laughs> yeah. You'd think he'd, she'd want him to die at that point. <laughs> Yeah, what? 82-year-old? Oh, never mind. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, but no, clearly, yeah, so... Oh, I mean, it's this is really, really, really sad. This is heartbreaking. Uh, You're absolutely right. It is... It's, it's I mean, she such just a, doesn't want him to die. Probably, <sighs> right? Yeah. She's she's having trouble letting go, and uh, and so she's... But, like, it seems like handling that through the courts is the wrong way to go, if that's your... If that's your beef, I mean, it could be, and honestly, this sounds pretty likely to me. It could be that she thinks that if he does this, he's going to go to hell. Oh. You know what I mean? This sounds very much like a religious objection that she has. And she's trying uh. to save him from doing a thing that will send him to hell for eternity. Which I I, I get that uh, that notion but fucking let the man go. <sighs> He's suffering. And she's like, no, just suffer a little while longer. So anyway, yeah. she filed the injunction. A, uh, a, ju- a judge has denied the motion to stay the ruling. So uh, in, in doing so, uh, so uh, I guess the, uh, the, the, there, were, uh, there was a, a ruling. And then uh, so there was an injunction. Um, this, or rather the Supreme court dismissed her in- injunction and she filed for a, uh, an appeal, I guess. Okay. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I, it's not a hundred percent clear to me what is happening, but what, it, what, what I do know is happening is that a justice has denied her injunction. Oh. Meaning that while the case is supposed to have a formal hearing on, on September 24th, uh, he may not show up to that because he now is clear to go ahead and do it if he wants to before oh, that. Oh, oh, oh. It's tricky. Yeah. It's tricky. Uh, and man, this is a... Uh, I don't know. They might get him on failure to appear or something. You know? <laughs> At that point, though, <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah. What a, what, a, what a rough thing. Like, what a rough way to end your marriage like don't go out with like he's trying to die with dignity and she's like oh oh no we're gonna make this ugly before you go this is gonna be nasty before you go <laughs> oh god <sighs> Very oh it sad. makes me so sad dan That's yeah the worst all right well dan well, i'm sure that your next story will cheer us right up whatever it is i don't know what it is but i'm sure it's but we we're so cheerful normally on this show i mean maybe um, oh okay there, there's i'm i'm a little uh mormon heavy this week mm. um this story is about a group of lds women who are are organizing against donald trump for this election um they have formed a group called women of faith speak up and speak out uh, okay that includes uh business and political and community leaders uh leaders of nonprofits. Uh, there's a business professor involved there's a former state um you know representative in the mm-hmm. utah house uh republican of course and a former state supreme court justice uh, has gotten involved and they are doing some messaging online and they are trying to reach specifically other women other mormon women who they know might need to feel like they're not alone in their dislike of of trump their, their, okay. their unease about trump and that it's okay to vote for for biden right you don't have right. to vote for trump is is essentially what their message is sure and which to any of our listeners 
that that could be a tough sell to a Utah Mormon. <laughs> I know. However, you know Utah. So Mormons in in general and uh, have have voted very in similar numbers to how evangelicals have voted, sort of sure. over the last couple decades, right? Uh, in fact, this article has some some numbers about this. Uh, so basically their their support of republican presidents has been sort of in lockstep um oh, with yeah. them right uh, but in 2016 the year that we voted in trump uh yeah. 81% of white evangelicals voted for trump compared to only 61% of mormon voters interesting right? Uh, and we know that, that that was, you know, if you'll recall, there was the third party candidate in Utah that took like 20 or 30 percent of the vote. Um, yeah. I forget he was the guy's a Mormon. name. Mormon guy. Evan Mullen? That's, or if Mc that's not it, it's really close, right? Something like that. Anyway, he uh, he took a lot of what would have been sort of the Trump vote. And it, it, it gave Mormons a, 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 a place that they felt like they could put their vote right mcmullen McMullen. evan mcmullen yeah uh anyway so how what are, what are we looking at right now where do what do mormons sort of think about donald trump apparently nationally 55 percent of lds voters or it's only 55 percent of lds voters approve of the president's performance performance uh, okay. with 40 percent actively disapproving Compared to 71% of evangelicals who approve and 26 who disapprove. Uh, wow. So there's no data specifically about LDS women, but uh, sort of no national data specifically right. about LDS women. But there is for Utah, right? Okay. Uh, half of self-described very active LDS women in Utah strongly or somewhat disapprove of the president. Huh. And fifty nine percent of somewhat active women disapprove. Disapprove, right? Wow. And this is in contrast with LDS men in Utah, uh, yeah. of whom uh, let's see, two thirds approve of the president. And so what they're thinking is they they have a real chance to by messaging both here and nationally. Because there's there's actually a lot of Mormons in a couple key states, and if they could just reach a lot of these people, they they feel that it, it's like okay, Utah's probably not going to vote for Biden, right? Like that's right. that's kind of just a given, right? Um, but it's just this fascinating thing because like in you know, there's apparently three hundred thirty thousand Mormons in Texas, right? And if you sure. get a portion of them to not vote for Trump and to vote for Biden. Um, uh, roughly a hundred thousand in North Carolina, which I think is crazy. A hundred and eighty thousand in in Florida. A hundred and eighty thousand as well in Arizona. Uh, and Arizona is like this as far as like you know how's how it's gonna go. Right. Um, most likely, the polling is looking pretty good for Biden. But nonetheless, I just think this is fascinating that these that these uh that these Mormons. These Mormon women are just saying like, no, fuck no. But let's, it's this, so this guy is so vile. They, I mean, they really dislike him. They, they've, they've, let's see, this is what one of the, this is a former chief of staff, deputy chief of staff, sorry, uh, for governor Gary Herbert, our Utah's uh -huh. current governor. Uh, her name's Allie Isom. Um, she's working and she's worked in the, the Mormon church's public relations department until earlier this year. She's actively involved in this group and she says this november as women of faith and covenant um we reject the ugly cruel and corrupt um uh, to champion principle unity harmony and integrity and she says that they're trying to reach the silent majority and let them know that there are others who feel the current tenor in public discourse is unacceptable and even dangerous so yeah. great that's awesome okay yeah i i I'm skeptical. Oh, the, oh, skeptical of. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, that, well, that it's going that they're going to have any appreciable effect, but I think though, boy, it's it, it does seem to be. Um, what what's the right 
what's the right word? There's there, I th it might not be about this election, especially for Utah, right? Right. Um, but if funny things are happening in Utah, as yeah, it's definitely like it used to be the reddest of the red states. Not yeah. too long ago, this yeah. was this was the conservative stronghold, right. the GOP stronghold of the country, and now it's pretty pink. It's uh, it's pink. It's definitely lightening sure. up. Yeah. Um, there's, and so I think that like people, f because of Trump, they're feeling like they can maybe vote for a Democrat. And once you do it once, right. It will probably be easier the second time. Right. Yeah. It's just like, you know, I'm a, I registered to be a Republican. Yeah. And, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and I haven't, I haven't turned back. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, yeah, oh, yeah, this is great. Yeah. I'm not we, gonna I mean, we're never, we're, we're, we're not going to vote for <laughs> any of, uh, any of the Republicans that are currently around. No, I, I don't mind voting for a Republican if I think they're better than the Democratic candidate. That doesn't bother me at all. Well, I voted for Huntsman back in the day. Yeah. So, so there you go. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to take us to Florida where there's been a bit of a row in the Oskaloosa County Sheriff's Office. Uh, oh, Okaloosa. Okaloosa. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's one of those weird words. It sounded great the first time you said it. You should have just stuck with it. I like, should have just, just gone with it. I was no, like, we congratulations, Dan. You knocked that one out of the park. But We would have we would have gotten an email. It's fine. How anyway, <laughs> here, here's someone from Okaloosa, Okaloosa, is going to, is now there's definitely going to write in now i've just guaranteed it that's fine write in tell me how to pronounce it that's great um anyway uh their sheriff's office sent an email out to all the staff members uh which was like hey you know great job i just want to touch base and say that uh that you shouldn't say anything inflammatory online that uh cuz we don't we don't want anything getting you know, getting misrepresented or anything out in the out in the uh, the media. Now, normally, uh, that's just sort of a normal. That's sort of a thing that, yeah, you know, any any organization that is represented by their, you know, by by their employees needs to sort of keep tabs on what messaging is going out. Um, but in this case, it got a little weird because this email was also uh, heavily laden with uh scripture Ooh. which is which is yucky and yeah. uh and also because it is a governmental uh, entity not in the strictest sense illegal <laughs> so uh unfortunate so uh one brave and possibly very stupid soul decided to speak up about this <laughs> uh deputy david holt uh decided to uh to basically just say hey look i'm a native i'm of native american descent my spiritual beliefs uh have nothing have nothing to do with your christianity so how about you don't do that mm. and uh and also let's let's point out that like the policy of the sheriff sheriff's office uh and the policies of the uh equal opportunity equal equal employment opportunity commission all are kind of like you know, against the sharing of scripture in official things. <laughs> um, so yeah, this uh, this is a of course one of those moments where a hero steps forward and is immediately punished for uh, for stepping forward and just saying what should be obvious to all of them. Oh, no. uh, now, he, Mr. Holt is on administrative leave uh, while they while they figure out what's wait 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 what, wait what's to happen he's on administrative leave oh yeah oh yeah yep they uh they he said hey how about the constitution and they said hey how about uh you're you're not gonna be a a cop for a while <laughs> that's fucked up <sighs> yeah oh boy you gotta love that dan yeah, it's uh, they they don't like hearing that they've done something wrong. <laughs> I think if there's one thing that we can learn from the last few months about police officers, they don't like hearing that you don't approve of what they did. <laughs> they don't want to hear about it. <laughs> oh golly, damn! All those Black Lives Matter protesters—they're—they're not—they're not into you. 
They're, they don't like that. <laughs> Stop telling them that they're doing things wrong. Yeah. Dan. Yeah. Here's somebody who did something wrong. Uh-oh. And I find it both surprising and upsetting. Okay. Because I thought he was doing better than this. Uh, oh, Pope dear. Francis. Oh, dear. Uh, he met with worshipers this last week with his mask off. And, s- oh. and he went around shaking hands and reaching out to touch the the, the worshipers. Um, and he, in his, in his uh, little speechy thing, uh, he says uh, that the pandemic would be defeated by God's love and that the Christian response to the pandemic and to the consequent socioeconomic crisis is based on love. Mm. And that we will, um, we could emerge from the coronavirus crisis all the better uh, by if we seek the common good together. I don't but know not, what any of this has to do with wearing a mask or not. <laughs> I but th- not common good enough to like just be decent and not and and wear a mask yeah get this a virus does not recognize barriers borders or cultural or political distinctions but must be faced with love without barriers <laughs> borders or distinction do you know what a virus does recognize yeah. at yeah. least in some small regard at least enough to statistically help with the spread it recognizes yeah. the fucking mask that's right yeah oh that's crazy god and so yeah so uh he added to this we if we uh we can heal the world if we all strive alongside each other for the common good you are not <laughs> you have rejected the common good the moment you took off the mask and started shaking people's hands i'm so mad at him right now yeah what a fucking because, piece and, of shit and because he's been okay up until now on this topic yeah uh, for those of you who who aren't who aren't aware of this and I'm just I I assume our most of our listeners are 100% on board with this but like your mask pr- protects other people from you like right. there's a good chance that even if you have the virus you won't know it for a while right so you wear a mask when you're around other people to protect them from you and hopefully they wear a mask to protect you from them exactly but your mask isn't about protecting yourself no so him removing the mask isn't an act of, like, I am brave for me. It's an act of, I don't really care that much about yeah. you. I'm going to shed some virus all over you. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, cute. I'm mad. Popey. Real, real cute. <laughs> Popes um, suck. Popes in general just suck. <laughs> you know, you do. might start off, like, being hopeful. You know, we were hopeful with francis i remember being uh, like wow that's a different kind of pope right <laughs> he uh, sure did talk different yeah but he doesn't he doesn't walk different <laughs> he's uh he's his his walk is is the pope walk all right well uh in north carolina uh there was students at a at east alexander middle school received free Daily planners. Isn't that nice? Little books. Oh, yeah. Real, like <laughs> little not Franklin planners. Little little sort of daily planner. Not, I mean, not as good as a Franklin. <laughs> Remember when we did planning in a physical book? Yeah, I don't think any of these kids are going to do that. They all they all have iPhones or whatever. They're, nah, they're not going to do Dan, I, I will book. actually say that uh, from time to time in my life, I do interact with a young person. Um and uh-huh. uh i've now i'm speaking speaking more college aged um okay i there were a few at work right uh sure they loved their planners okay i was shocked and they oh, they would get it out and they'd have their highlighters and they'd color code <laughs> and this and that um of course they were all young women i'd never saw any of the young men do that but like um hmm. but very sort of it was this organizing sort of fastidiousness right that i was yeah. like good for you right people still love it people still love the the analog uh log they love their books yeah andrea andrea loves a good a good planner yeah physical 
it's, write in it with a pen type planner. Planners are not just for old people, right? <laughs> well, in fact, I would say old, old people, people are probably, I mean, not elderly, right? But like right. olders like us are probably more likely to really like the one in our, in our, in our phone. Yeah, that's true. Right. I, I, who knows? Anyway, who knows? anyway, anyway right, yeah. uh, well, the, uh, the, as students opened their planners, their middle school planners, <laughs> They, they may have noticed that uh, a, a section was cut out on the back page. What? These planners had been donated by the Sulphur Springs Baptist Church uh, wow. and, uh, and ha included Bible verses on the back, which uh, school officials very rightly noticed and said, oh, that's not okay. Uh -oh. And they actually took the correct action and cut it out. I think that's amazing. I am so glad. I uh, like su school system executive director Alicia Clower. You go. I love it. Well done. She claimed <laughs> uh, separation between church and state was important, mm. and then went ahead and did that, uh, pointing out that it would be breaking the law to include the scripture. Wow. Um, let, let, let me, can I ask a question? How did this, how did this actually play in the community though? Because Silver, uh, Silver Springs, what'd you say? Baptist church? Sulphur Springs. Sulphur Springs Baptist yeah, church. Because, Surely because they were the, upset. Because they what you want to do is name your agenda. church after something stinky. <laughs> That's what. Well, I mean. Uh, no, actually the, uh, the, the church responded in a, in a sort of gentle way, actually. They said, um, well, one church member said that uh, they thought it was okay. Uh, it was a little okay. disappointing, but uh, but they said uh, I'm, I'm calling not... bullshit. I'm calling <laughs> right. bullshit. This is not a real news story. This this doesn't happen, Dan. <laughs> Total fucking bullshit. Like, uh. This is not how people in the world today respond. A school administrator did the right thing and came right. out for the separation of church and state. And then the most, most obviously offended party is like, well, yeah, we see their point. Yeah. <laughs> that maybe that's why it made the news. Maybe that's why it's newsworthy. <laughs> breaking what? <laughs> breaking news today. Everybody did the right thing. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, we've never seen it before <laughs> where is sulfur springs i don't know where this place is. where is this uh this is this is uh this is alexander county north carolina oh well wow yeah. okay good on you guys so congratulations for being yeah. reasonable yeah i'm huh. sure that that means that something horrible is going to happen next <laughs> but for right now we can be happy with them <laughs> That's awesome. Well, if you guys have any uh, any predictions as to what awfulness is coming for uh, uh, Alexander <laughs> County, please feel free to write in to us, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Stick around. There's more show coming up. Hey Dan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um there's a voice that has been missing from the show for a while. <laughs> a voice that I well, that I oh, it's such a good voice. It's well, such a attached to such a good human being. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh this is a voice that that we all need. So look, every now and then what we need in our lives is a coach. Mm. And uh, and Dave Dobenmeyer, yeah, Coach Dave, yeah, has stepped up to be that voice in the darkness. Yeah, uh, he, <laughs> he he had a, a, some really bad experiences this week, and he just needs to to vent about it. But he, boy, he's clever. Yeah, I got to say this, he uh, he really gets it. So let's talk a little bit with Coach Dave about masks. I ain't wearing no mask. You hear me? I ain't wearing no mask. I know the mask doesn't work. And I'm not going to wear my mask to make the worker at uh, T-Mobile feel better.
I'm not going to do that. That's bearing false witness. I know the mask doesn't work. I'm not going to wear my mask when I go into Staples. I'm not going. To, I'm just not going to do it. I know the mask doesn't work. I'm not going to try to make the people at Best Buy feel better by putting one on. I don't care what their sign says. I don't. I. I couldn't. Care, I just couldn't. I had to fight three fights yesterday over the stinking mask. Now, to some of you that may not bother, folks. I want you to know this from my from my heart to your heart. I think the forced wearing of masks is exceedingly dangerous to our American society. And I cannot believe, as I go out on a perfectly beautiful, sunlit, warm day here in Ohio, the number of people I see outside wearing masks. I, I just, it, driving down the car, down the road in a car wearing a mask. I can't believe it. And I made the decision. For me, I'll have no part of it. I will have no part of it. T-Mobile guy said, well, we'll have to do the work outside. He would, they wouldn't let me in. And uh, the, the boss got involved. The manager got involved with it. I said, ma'am, I have a heart condition. I don't even have to tell you that. But I have reasons I'm not going to wear, wear a mask. It's medical. And are you refusing to give me service? because of a medical condition that I have. And she just looked at me because she didn't know what to say. And uh, then I really pl pulled the trump card. I said, I think I was born with this medical condition. I'm not sure I think I was. And I want to ask you something, ma'am. Would you refuse to serve somebody because they're black? Of course, your eyes got as big as, as dollar bills. How dare I say that? So I was born with this condition, ma'am. And you would not ask a black man to step outside of the, out of the building. And you're not going to ask me to do it. She stormed away, as you can probably imagine. Ruined the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his day got ruined. Oh, man. Oh. It ruined his whole day because he, cause he's a dick. You know, it's getting to the point where you can't be an asshole to people in stores without it ruining your whole day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Oh. When he starts off and he's like, he mentions T-Mobile. I'm like, that's strangely specific. This is going someplace. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. I suspect he actually, actually did this. What a horrible... <sighs> Like, okay, like, there are a couple medical conditions, right, that have been listed. They're for real, right? But he's... Are there? There are. Like, um, people in particular, like people with PTSD, who might uh, find oh. having a mask on triggering. And then okay. um, there were a couple others, some respiratory something or other. I can't remember exactly what they were, but I looked it but up. Like, and it, so, so there are actual claims to this, right? But that's not what he led with. And that's also not, it's also not true in his case because right. he's lying. Yeah. Right. He's very, you do, you don't have a heart condition. Right. And and you definitely and if, don't and if you do there's nothing in you that believes right. that you had it since birth <laughs> and also obviously not relatable in any way <laughs> to racism oh my god like in no way is that the same thing and you fucking know it but uh, but you know wearing a mask would be bearing false witness right right so lie cuz he knows that they don't work he knows it <sighs> Like, I don't know if you've ever, if you've Googled do masks work recently, but you'll find eminent sources, Mayo Clinic, mm. CDC, mm -hmm. MIT, mm. Stanford, all talking about how, oh yeah, masks 100% work. And not 100%, but they definitely work. Not 100% of the time, but they, the, but they cut the transmission rates down significantly. Sure, yes. Yeah, I love that he says he had this fight three times. I know. He just went around. Because guess what happened all three times? Oh. You didn't get to go to the fucking store. I know. 
You didn't get your phone from T-Mobile, buddy. You didn't get a new I'm TV sorry. from Best Buy or whatever else oh. you were getting. Whatever you were getting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He, he didn't even get his <laughs> his highlighters and, and <gasps> post-it notes from Staples. Uh, I love the Poor these. Poor guy. These are the stores. I mean, he had, like, first of all, <laughs> I've, I've, I've had that day. I've had the T-Mobile <laughs> Best Buy Staples day. Right. Like, it already yeah. is not a good day. Like, that's probably no, no. more what ruins your day than... <laughs> Well, no, he didn't get his way. Of course, it ruined his day. Oh, a white it's... Christian man <laughs> who's who's denied anything for any reason. That's it's, it's just totally ruined his day. Oh. Unbelievable. Oh. Poor coach. And his day. objection here, like, how big of an asshole do you have to? Here's the thing. Okay, let's say that you are convinced that masks don't work. You, he knows that it's not going to actually hurt him. He knows his heart condition. He'll be just fine if he wears a mask. Right. He knows that right. for sure. Right. But he's convinced that they don't work. Fine. You could still wear a mask and just not be a dick about right. it. You can make other people feel better. Right. Yeah. But no, he needs to prove to the world that he's right. Yeah. By not being allowed in stores and arguing right. and making somebody else's life a little yeah. bit harder. Which, by the way, I think is a segue into Donnie's voicemail. So I think we should play that. Excellent. Hey, Frank and Dan. This is Donnie in Mount Shasta, California. I'm a little backed up because it's been a really bit busy summer. So I just listened to one of your Frank and Dan diaries in which you talked about how it must be hell for service industry people right now. Well, I'm a 20-year server. It's been my career. I've traveled the country doing it, and it is hell. From top to bottom, those those businesses that can be open, we're doing the very best we can under some very difficult circumstances, but there's an upside. At this point, I actually have gotten to the point, and all of my coworkers have gotten to the point, where we'll tell you to go screw yourself if you can't follow the rules and if you can't be respectful and if you can't be patient with us while we're doing this work, because we're all putting ourselves in jeopardy. So if you could just do a public service announcement at some point and just let everybody know, we're doing the best we can, and we're working as hard as we can, and we don't have to be here, but we are really grateful to be working, and we're really grateful to be able to take care of people. But wear your freaking mask, obey the social distancing rules, sanitize your hands, wash your hands appropriately, and just be nice. Anyway, thanks. I always enjoy your show. Bye. There's your PSA. Oh, thanks, Donnie. Yeah, thank you. Also, it sounded a lot like you said Dottie, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a great... That uh, Look, it doesn't matter what your beliefs are about the masks. Just be a good person. Yeah. Please, for the love of Christ, be a good person. It's these people are working so hard yeah yes this is this is their this is their job it's their income right like yeah. like there's <laughs> like they have to be there right the restaurants yeah. are open for better or for worse in in most of the country right yeah and uh and then i can't imagine that the money right now is great right no and so this is about just getting through this time and they're probably working extra hours, which means even exposing exposing themselves even more. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. It's so stressful. Yeah. And then on top of the act, just the stress of doing the job, <laughs> they get assholes being cunts to them. And I, I, I have to say, Dan, um, yeah. that I... I it it also has to be a larger percentage of just the assholes in general, right? Or the people <laughs> who are out in the public right now, right? Like, yeah. like going to restaurants. Yeah, that's true. Like, I would have that's to true. think that that's who it is. Like I know there are so situations where you you're you're in a bind. You're going into a restaurant. You're getting your meal, right? Like, and you yeah. probably don't even want to, but you have your mask on. You feel okay because you're six feet. Your tables are all spaced out and everything, and the staffs all wearing right. their masks. And and so, like, I get it. Like, there are situations where maybe you have to go into a restaurant. Um, and uh, although personally, me been doing takeout. Um, yeah. 
I, uh, it, it seems like the people who have, who, who have that attitude of let's just get takeout and da, 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 that these are the people who probably <laughs> are your, some of your nicer guests, right? Yeah. Like, and so yeah, the like, ones who are going to the restaurant are the coach Dave's yeah, of the world. I know. And it's just Ugh. like, it's like, ugh, right now, Donnie, you're doing the Lord's work out there. So stay strong keep it up. servers. Yeah. We, I, I, we salute you. Yeah. Uh, hey, we had some folks write into us also. Uh, Vincent wrote in to say, I'm late to the conversation as I suddenly realized I had a great experience in a reused church. Oh. You remember a couple yeah. weeks ago we talked about, about repurposing uh, throwaway church buildings, buildings <laughs> that no longer could, could financially support church, but yet are there uh, and, and are being repurposed. Uh, Vincent goes on. Personally, churches should all be made into housing, in my opinion. But if not, I came across a great alternative here in Montreal. Right before the shutdown of everything, I went to see a cabaret slash acrobatic show in a repurposed church. Oh. Amazing! The trapeze act was a little scary as the guy whizzed inches from our heads. But what a place to see a cabaret show. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean, it's a performance space. That's what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like what you're used to seeing as a performance is, you know, a guy in a in a costume who gets up and <clears throat> says some stuff. There's music. Mm -hmm. It's not a very good show. It's usually terrible. Usually, but uh, but it's a performance space. So go for it. I say. Yeah. Nice. Fun. Um. Do we have we have another voicemail? Don't we? We do. We have another. Let's see. This is uh from a listener who he's sharing a story about um basically his experience watching somebody um change and and as they get into a, a into a religion right and so yeah. i thought it was yeah I it was an interesting story so let's let's it's how religion ruins everything <laughs> hey frank and dan my name is mark i've been listening to you guys show for about six months now and it's one of my favorite podcasts i'm also a competitive weightlifter seems like recently in our community, we've taken a significant loss. One of our more significant female weightlifters has committed to Islam. And because of that, and she was a, she was a very, very good athlete. She really had Olympic chances. She, uh, she married an Islamic man, committed to Islam, and was made posts about how you're not supposed to show her skin anymore on Instagram or post any videos of her previous weightlifting showing her hair. It's just kind of a uh, an eye opener to show that, you know, the the toll this takes as far as converts to Islam, they are immediately put through the paces and just sort of put down and even their previous accomplishments can no longer be showed or or congratulated. It's all about don't show me anymore. I'm a woman. I have to hide myself. And it's just a significant loss. It was very sad to see. Um, obviously, it's obviously her decision, but it's just sad to see someone stomp all over her in this religion. Anyways, keep up the podcast. You guys are doing great work. Thank you. Well, thanks, Mark. Yeah. The oh my gosh you know it's uh <laughs> it's just it's always cr just a, a really amazing thing to watch someone actively participate in their own repression yeah. in their own like uh, uh subjugation yeah absolutely and this this retroactive covering thing that's like right. not even old pictures of her hair can be out there like that's just wow that's taking it seriously yeah. We're gonna we're gonna need to erase your history now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, oh, that's uh, too bad. And th thanks for thanks for joining our religion. Uh, let's just get rid of you if we could. <laughs> well, uh, let's exactly just make that. sure that. I mean, this is we, just more obvious. But you're absolutely right, Dan. Like, get rid of you. You're. Yeah. That, and isn't that the message of religion? Is that you're not good <laughs> enough, and you have to change, and you have to yeah be something different, right? Right. You know that thing that you are that God created? Uh, let's fix that. Yeah. Let's let's not be that Good anymore. God. Yeah. 
Ugh. Oh, boy. Well, Jared wrote into us, uh, hey guys, love your show. I've been thinking lately about the blatant hypocrisy in most evangelical circles. <laughs> yeah. Which one? <laughs> You're going to have to be more specific, <laughs> especially with regards to the latest Falwell scandals. Mm. It reminded me of a few things from my younger years. For instance, I almost went to a Christian college in Colorado that had very similar rules as Liberty U. No drinking, no smoking, no sex, multiple weekly church services, etc. <clears throat> I didn't attend mainly because tuition was too high. But now I'm an atheist. Glad I dodged that bullet. Yeah. I also used to work for an evangelical youth organization called Young Life. Not to be confused with the... Uh, Largely Mormon, Young Living, which is a, uh, a multi-level uh, essential smelly oil, oil company. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, the director of my in, in my area was a jackass in a lot of ways. For, ex for instance, most volunteers were over the age of 21, but he made a rule that leaders could not drink in public. He wanted us to, quote, set a good example. Meanwhile... He would go out bar hopping in the small college town where we all lived on a routine basis. <sighs> in addition to other stupid nonsense, he would also shame volunteers for not praying seriously enough <laughs> during the 6 a.m. <laughs> prayer meetings. Anyway, I thought you might enjoy this. Uh, oh, peeks Jared. into their hearts. That's not a sincere yeah, exactly. prayer. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that wasn't sincere. You've got to do it again. <laughs> I... <laughs> Jesus, it's. I heard a story just this week about some Mormon guys who uh, I can't I can't be too specific about this because I I don't want it getting back to anybody. But a bunch of Mormon guys who are very are like they don't want to work to like like do business with non-mormons oh, because they feel like they you know because they want to make sure that everything's on the up and up and <laughs> that they have the blessings of jesus christ in their endeavors meanwhile every year they take a trip to vegas <laughs> and on that trip uh, avail themselves of sex workers what so you know, as well as gambling and drinking so oh my god Hypocrisy is the hallmark of, of of religion in general. Like religion is, I mean, it's what we were talking about, right? Religion, as uh, as Christopher Hitchens says, or said, uh, it it tells you that you're sick and commands you to be well. Right. So yeah, it, it what it does is it tells you that all the things that are you naturally that are uh, good and inherent about yourself right. are evil and uh, and so yeah basically you get all of these hypocrites are just sort of swinging back and forth between honoring their own real self and honoring their bullshit imposed religious self anywho uh, hey we have some folks uh, we, we've got some people to thank we sure do and, uh, Dan I'm going to start. Okay. We had a, a one-time donation, a lovely one-time donation from Cosmic. So thank you so much, Cosmic. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. And uh, we also have some new patrons over on Patreon. Um, we have two new deacons. Uh, Ooh. Brendan and Dr. H. Thank you to the both of you. Well, congratulations on your new priesthood. Well done. And we have two new priests, Dan. Oof. Uh, we have Jasmine and Victoria. Oh wow! So thank you. To I, the both I do of love you it when we confer well. priesthood on women. That is a, a particular joy for me. Absolutely. And so uh, praise be to you, as always, Dan. We have our top donor, our Lord and Savior, Davis. Amazing, you guys. Thank you. We love it. I think all of you should be giving if you can. Uh, it's it's a good thing to do. You can do it just you just go to our website, thankgodamatheist.com. It's that simple. Click through the through the support us thing and 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 you're there. Dan. 
Yes. Uh, I, here's the deal, and I'm okay. growing tired of it. Uh, <laughs> it it and it's, I'm, I'm really like at my breaking point, and it's <laughs> it's it's not so much that be, the, the 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 year has gone so poorly, right, and that things just keep just getting sort of you know we have pestilence and and uh, and and wild crazy you know weather phenomenon it's not that that really pisses me off it's okay. all of the oh 2020 <laughs> <laughs> oh go oh, oh it's oh, of course something's going wrong it's 2020 and we're all doing it i'm doing it and i'm tired of it i'm just tired of it <laughs> as like as a rhetorical thing i'm retired i'm tired of it as just conceptually like it fucking sucks we all know it Right, that's yeah. that's where I'm at. Yeah, it, <laughs> but like, it's you got to give room for people to just process the bullshit any way they can. Yeah, because I know, I know, I'm done with it though. <laughs> like, it's I'm, crazy right now. I don't know if our listeners know this, but I I mentioned it at the top of the show. So many trees <laughs> are knocked down. In Salt Lake City, you have no I you can't imagine the destruction in my neighborhood. Yeah. Just trees on crushing houses, de crushing demolishing cars, cars yeah. across the street, blocking traffic. Mm -hmm. Because we had in Salt Lake City a landlocked city surrounded by mountains. We had hurricane level winds. Yeah. Two days ago, it was yeah. madness. Yeah. It just seriously sustained for hours. Oh yeah, just, it was. It wouldn't stop. It, like the warning was like, yeah, you know, brace yourself tonight. Right, that was Monday night. Right, and, like lock down your trampolines. Right, and then, uh, <laughs> and then, like, come morning, it was insane. It was just devastation. Power gets kicked gets gets knocked off right for like oh yeah probably like a third of the valley or something like the numbers are just insane of people without power yeah and it's just <laughs> so so like yeah apocalypse right like i get it i get it and this is the same year that salt lake city and this is just you know this is just our little neck of the woods we also had uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic, yeah, uh, when everything was shut down, we had an earthquake. Yeah. So it's like, and not a small earthquake, no. a, pre, a really noticeable earthquake with lots of act, aftershocks that were shaking us for a few days afterwards. A few weeks. Uh, it was obnoxious. So you guys, we're we're feeling it. Yeah, we understand it. It feels like the end of the world. Other places, I mean, you know, all of you Californians oh, are going to write into us and say, um. Have you seen any pictures of here? Yeah. Because there it's crazy. There yeah. were hurricane our, force winds. Our trees fell over. They they just don't have any left. Well, yeah. <laughs> they keep burned up. <laughs> yeah. And I still don't even know if the baby was a boy or a girl. So <laughs> That's true. That's it, the one detail in the story they never say. Yeah. <laughs> the gender just, reveal we, party. Somebody tell us whether it was a boy or a girl. <laughs> By the way, stop having gender reveal parties. It's really stupid concept. Just don't do it anymore. <laughs> Cut it out. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know you want a, uh, an excuse to throw a party. I get it. But just stop doing yeah, that. Were they wearing First masks? All, were they wearing masks? We don't. Right? I doubt it. And also, also, we don't care if your baby has a penis. You still don't know what the gender of that baby is. Let's, That's let, a good but point. But we'll get into that another That's time. That's a good point, Dan. Um, okay, so so yes. 2020, we've got pestilence. We've got a worldwide pandemic. We've got a lot of shit hitting the fan. We lost Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Oh, that's how right. Are we gonna, yeah. How are we going to survive this thing? <laughs> um, so, so it feels like I can understand why a Christian believer would say, this feels like the end of days. Yeah. This is the apocalypse as taught to us in the book of Revelation. Yeah, this is, except they're happening. missing the one key important detail, which is the Antichrist in the White House. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, well, they <laughs> like the like the biblical description of the Antichrist, if you're gonna just look at it, right, 
he really does tick the boxes it's kind of pretty Donald good. Trump, right? But they refuse to look at that one. The most obvious well, blatant one. Right. <laughs> Somehow, they got through the entire Obama administration, and he never turned out to be the actual Antichrist that they were positive that he was, right. which is shocking to all of them. Right. And then they and, actually uh, get and now, one. now we've got a guy who literally, yeah, if you go down the line of the <laughs> attributes of the Antichrist, we got him. There he is. But, uh, but yeah, they haven't noticed that yet. <laughs> So, yeah, you got an apocalypse here. Uh, it's crazy. Here's the thing, though. This is a bad year, mm -hmm. but bad years fucking happen, man. Yeah. Like, you want to talk about an apocalypse year? I mentioned this a little bit in the Frank and Dan Diaries, available to many of our patrons. Please see our Patreon for more details. <laughs> uh, we were talking about... Nice plug. The, the <laughs> fact of... Uh, the year 1666 mm. in London. Mm, yeah, yeah. Now, Salt Lake City in the year 2020 feels a little crazy, yeah. a little nuts. Right. But if you were in London in 1666, holy fucking shit. That was the year that there was a, a resurgence of plague, of the Great Plague, mm. from 1665 into 66, uh, which killed... An estimated uh, 100,000 people, almost a quarter of London's population, in that in 18 months. So, you know, it, we're we're well over 100,000 people here in the United States from coronavirus, but that's not even close to a quarter of our population. Right, right. Uh, so, yeah, think in terms of one in every four people is dead from the plague, and then, <sighs> oh. Your whole city burns down. <laughs> right. Uh, basically, everything burned. Uh, it destroyed 13,200 houses. Oh, my God. 87 parish churches. Uh, St. Paul's Cathedral, which now the new St. Paul's Cathedral is, is beautiful. So, yeah. you know, uh, thanks, good. Christopher Wren, <laughs> for rebuilding. Uh, but, yeah. Now, I will say uh, this, it, Dan. I mean, yeah. you, you're talking about fire destroying things. That old, that abandoned dry cleaner on on uh, 900 South burned down yesterday. <laughs> That's true. We had, we. It's roughly so equivalent. It's, it's basically <laughs> tomato tomato at this point. Yeah, they estimate that 70,000 of the city's 80,000 inhabitants lost their oh, homes. Jesus Christ! In the fire. Wow. So. So yeah, I mean, and somehow there, that wasn't. It was the year. There was a six. And the year six, was six in the it year. Had a six 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 in the name. And the somehow year. that wasn't the end of the world. I think yeah. we're fine. I think we're gonna be okay, except for the end of the world that we are bringing upon ourselves. Right. Well, there is that the climate uh, catastrophe actually, that is coming up. Yeah. And the Lord seems unable to enact an actual apocalypse. Right. Uh, he. He seems pretty, uh, pretty entirely impotent on that front. Yeah. I mean, it was all supposed to happen within a generation of Jesus dying. Right? Uh, did not, did not happen. I don't, I don't mean to spoil the book for you. A spoiler alert. Yeah. But yeah, um, the apocalypse didn't happen within a generation or even within two thousand years. Yeah. Though his timing you know, of the creation of America was off. Right, like he sh he needed to get uh, around to creating America sooner, mm. right? Because like yeah, we're it's, doing a really good job of like destroying things. Yeah, it's true. Like, like what's nice is, you know, what what the Lord was incapable of doing, humanity is accomplishing <laughs> for Him. So that's a yeah. Considering uh, that we are are literally uh, raising the temperature of the Earth to a point where every year is catastrophic fires in California and bizarro yeah, now we're getting bizarro weather patterns. I mean that's part of it, right? Is yeah. Is crazy winds in Salt Lake mm -hmm. City. More frequent and more powerful events. Um, yeah. and boy, this was this was a a doozy. Like when it was yeah. forecast, I was like, oh yeah, like three years ago there was that big windstorm up in Davis County. You know, oh that was it was just <laughs> yeah. awful. You know, yeah, and uh, and I was like, oh, it's just gonna be another one of those, right? Like batting down the hatches, and then yeah. it was just like 
fucking hell. Yeah. It really genu- genuinely guys, I <laughs> I, I took a tour of the Salt Lake City uh, Cemetery up in the avenues in Salt Lake today just to sort of survey the damage. And there are, you know, enormous trees mm. just pulled up by the roots, taking gra- headstones with them yeah. as, they, as they're pulled up and crushing headstones below them. Yeah. And, and it's, it's in the dozens yeah. of trees. Did you see the, the um, uh, City Hall? City and County building. Oh no! You didn't go by City Hall. No, I, I. That's one that I haven't gone by. I went. I went up to the state capitol, yeah. which also lost oh, a bunch of trees. Oh, I bet they lost a lot of trees. They probably lost more trees up there than than um, the City County building did. But like, yeah, I was like, oh god, oh god. Yeah, it's uh it's it's actually kind of devastating. It's uh, you know, trees are trees are beautiful and they make they make life nicer. Hmm. So we lost a bunch of those. One person died, so we did lose some, a little bit of life. Um, but yeah, it's a, it, it's good to keep a little bit of perspective. Yeah. In all of yeah. this, because because uh, as much as it as as tempting as it is to say these are the end of days, yeah. we're not those guys. You know no, what I mean? Yeah. That's their gig. Well, and to be honest, like if COVID wasn't happening, right? And if Donald right. Trump wasn't the president, which Donald Trump exacerbated COVID in this country, obviously, right? right? So yeah. that would have been, you know, just something that we were dealing with, like most mm-hmm. of the advanced world is just dealing with it. Um, yeah. Instead, we're suffering through it. Um, and, uh, you know, like if those two things, though, weren't going on, we would have had an earthquake earlier this year. And we would have had a mm-hmm. big windstorm right now, and we'd be like, wow, what a weird year. <laughs> yeah. Instead of like, <gasps> hashtag fuck 2020, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we're all depressed because we were quarantined and we were staying at home. We're sheltering at home, and it's. Oh, I know. We're not going to movies, and it sucks. <laughs> I know. When the power was out, and like, power, the power was out at work too. So, like, I was just like, well, I can't even, like, I can't do anything. I, I can't you know dial into my computer from home and i can't go and work at the computer at work so i'm just sitting at home and then i'm just like sitting and i'm like there's a storm going on outside there's no power yeah. i'm like well fuck me what am i supposed to do <laughs> i was just like this is great and so like i mean i spent you know i had my phone was you know the, the internet was working on my phone so i was able to do that yeah, I played some Animal Crossing because the Switch was, you know, <laughs> had a good charge on it. And like, I just it, like, it's kind of nuts though. It feels it, it's very funny when like when we're reduced to just our phones. When the only screen available to us is our phones, <laughs> suddenly we feel like Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> like, I'm just so, so just like we're, uh, we're 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 gonna put on our long pants now and. <laughs> Go and 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 uh, yeah, do small talk with uh, oh, down at the five and dime, I guess. Because like, what else is? I don't know. And I kept trying to come up with stuff to m- keep myself busy, right? So like, <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm gonna round up all the supplies we're gonna need to have the power out for a couple days. And so like, I'm yeah. like rummaging around for candles and finding batteries for like the little lantern and everything. I'm just uh, 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 uh. and then like ten minutes later. I'm like, well, fuck, that didn't take very long, right? Like, I'm just like, <laughs> like okay, what's next? Oh, yeah. I'll turn on the switch again, and oh, what's my little guy up to? <laughs> Let's go plant. You're some such flowers. a gamer. Let's plant flowers and yeah. catch some fish and bugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah well. Oh golly, no, Dan. Well. Uh, it's a good Everybody, point, though. It's good to keep it in perspective. I think that's a good good message. And don't let any of the people... Don't let your Christian friends talk about it as an apocalypse either. Yeah. Fuck that shit. Remind them about London. 1666. Remind them about London. Yeah. 666. Hashtag not 1666. That's, right? That should be the hashtag. That's right. Yeah. Anyway. 
So anyway, hey, if you if you want to write into us and tell us why this is in fact the apocalypse and we are very wrong, <laughs> please feel free to do so. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. And guys, yeah. if you like what you hear on the show, go to our website, thankgodimatheist.com, and click on the support tab. There's instructions for how you can su- support the show. Also, you can go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist, and click the like button where there's a lot of cool things. There's ship, there's snippets to share. Yeah, Frank. It's fun. It's cool. You can go. We, we got a cool little player. It's, it's got a little little line on it that <laughs> wiggles when we talk. It's it's, it's a snippetable. Waveform. We're snippetable. I know. Um, and if you are all if you are on uh, Facebook, you should also search for our the, the members the TGIA members only lounge. Uh, you request to join. It's a closed group. It's awesome. Um, and you can find us on Twitter at TGIA Atheist. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of their music, and a big thanks goes out to Gordon Johnston for the use of his music. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.